Hello and welcome to lecture six on distributed systems. Today we will look at consensus, which is one of the most tricky, but also one of the most important problems in distributed systems. And the concept context to this is last lecture, we talked about state machine replication, which is a great way of replicating some data from one node to another, from one replica to another. And in order to do state machine replication, we need to ensure that all of the replicas see the same updates in the same order, which we can do with total order broadcast. This now raises the question of how do we implement total order broadcast? We saw one way of doing this is to send all of the messages via a particular dedicated node that we call the leader. And this node is going to order all of the messages and make sure that they get uh, delivered in the same order on all of the nodes. Unfortunately, if that leader crashes or it becomes unavailable due to a network problem or it has a hardware failure or whatever, anything goes wrong, um, then this approach to total order broadcast stops working. Now, the question is now really, how can we deal with uh, the problem of a leader becoming unavailable? One option is to manually switch over to a new leader and this process is called failover. So manually means there's a human operator uh, who gets notified if the leader fails and this human is then going to choose a new node as the new leader and it's re going to reconfigure the system. So change all of the followers to accepting an, uh, this new node as their new leader, telling this new, this new node that it now has to be the leader and uh, act in this capacity to implement total order broadcast. And this works fine if you know in advance if the leader is going to go down, uh, which could happen, for example, if the leader is going down due to planned maintenance. So if you know advance, in advance that you want to reboot the leader tonight in order to install some software updates, um, then you just move the leader role to a different node before you install the software updates, and then you can take it down in peace and quiet and no problems at all. Unfortunately, this doesn't really help you in the case where the leader crashes unexpectedly, or if the leader suddenly develops a hardware fault and suddenly just stops working. And you know, computers do that sometimes. They do sometimes just stop working. In that case, it'll probably stop working at the most inconvenient time, so like three in the morning. And so somebody then has to get phoned and they have to get out of bed and log into their computer and reconfigure the system to use a new leader and so on. And so this is, possible and some database systems do implement replication in this way. But it does beg the question, can we somehow do this leader transition automatically so that we don't have to wake people up at three o'clock in the morning? Uh, and this transition of to a new leader is exactly what consensus algorithms are all about. So consensus and total order broadcast are two different problems but they're actually quite closely related, as I'll explain now. So the traditional way in which consensus is formulated in distributed systems is that you've got multiple nodes. Uh, each node may propose a value, and you want all of the nodes to decide on the same value. So think of it as like several friends deciding where to go for lunch today, and um, like they propose different restaurants uh, or shops to go to, and then um, by some kind of process, one of those proposals is going to get picked and then everybody is going to go to the same shop or restaurant for lunch. And so this is, uh, this is the consensus problem. Uh, we want the nodes to agree on, on one of the values that was proposed. Now, you can think of this as being equivalent to total order broadcast because in total order broadcast, what happens is we want all of the nodes to deliver the same messages in the same order. And so this agreement that the nodes need to come to is the agreement on what is the next message to deliver in this total order. And so you can keep doing consensus once for each message that needs to be delivered. And the consensus will guarantee that um, all of the nodes will make the same decision. And so at some point, a node decides that on a certain value, which means in total order broadcast terms, it delivers that message. And consensus guarantees that once a value has been decided, it's not going to change its mind about it. And so for total order broadcast, this means now once a message has been delivered, it has been delivered at a certain point in this total order. Um, 
And so for this reason, the consensus problem and total order broadcast are actually formally equivalent to each other, which means that if you have an algorithm for one, then you can convert it into an algorithm for the other and vice versa. Now, the classic consensus algorithm is called Paxos. Um, and what Paxos does actually is only consensus on a single value. But there's an extension to Paxos uh, called multi-Paxos, which actually provides total order broadcast. So that provides uh, agreement on a sequence of values, i.e. a sequence of messages to be delivered. And there are a whole bunch of other uh, consensus algorithms, including Raft, Ustamp for application, and Zookeeper's uh, Zookeeper Atomic Broadcast, Zab. And they are actually designed to provide total order broadcast right out of the box. So in this lecture, we're going to look at Raft in a more detailed way, because that is perhaps the easiest to understand, although all of these algorithms are, are rather complicated and rather subtle. Um, now, remember from lecture two, we talked about different system models, and this becomes very important now when we are talking about consensus. So remember that when we were talking about node behavior, for example, we could choose between do we want to crash stop or crash recovery or Byzantine, um, in which place nodes can behave arbitrarily, maliciously. Um, in terms of network, do we want to assume uh, fair loss, for example? And in terms of synchrony, timing, are we going to assume an asynchronous system or a partially synchronous system or a synchronous system? And what Paxos and Raft and all these uh, popular consensus algorithms do is they choose a partially synchronous crash recovery system model. Um, and you might wonder like why, why particular these choices? So in particular, the question of synchrony is an important one uh, because we, we've said that uh, a fully synchronous model is, is unrealistic because in real systems, you do get network delays and you do get various uh, delays that happen at various points. And so we can't rely on any upper bound of message latency when sending over the network. So the best we can hope for really is, is partially synchronous where most of the time the network is well behaved, but occasionally it has periods where messages are delayed for a long time or nodes pause their execution for a long time. Now, ideally we would want consensus to even work in an asynchronous system where we make, make no timing assumptions at all. But it turns out that this is actually impossible. So there is an impossibility proof, which is called the FLP result, which proves that it is not possible to implement a uh, consensus algorithm in an, in an asynchronous system uh, in such a way that this algorithm will always terminate. So if, the, if you have an asynchronous system, uh, and even if you only allow crash stop failures, so even not any of the more complex failures, um, then there will always be some executions of the, of the consensus algorithm in which the algorithm doesn't terminate. And so if you want termination, that is if you want the algorithm to make progress and eventually decide on something or for total order broadcast to eventually deliver a message, then we have to make these timing assumptions. So we have to assume at least partial synchrony, which means in effect that we use clocks for timeouts. Uh, or in other words, we have a timeout based failure detector uh, which we use in order to figure out if the leader has failed or not. Now, importantly, the correctness of the algorithm doesn't really depend on the timing at all. So the, even if the, the timing in the system goes really bizarre, consensus algorithm will still guarantee that the same sequence of messages is delivered in the same order. The only thing that timing affects is when that delivery happens. And so if, uh, if you have a system in which there are lots of weird delays happening, then it could be that the timing, that the, the delivery of the messages is delayed uh, for some amount of time until the system sorts itself out. So uh, the timing does affect the, the liveness of the system here, but not the safety. Now, it is also possible to uh, weaken the assumption about the crash recovery system model. And so it is actually possible to go all the way down to a Byzantine system model where we assume that uh, some of the nodes may behave maliciously. And it is possible to do consensus in that kind of system. Uh, and these types of Byzantine fault tolerant uh, consensus algorithms are used in the context of some cryptocurrencies and blockchains and that sort of area. Uh, 
However, these Byzantine fault tolerant algorithms are rather more complex than the crash recovery algorithms, and um, they are also a lot less efficient. And so for the purpose of this course, we're just going to concentrate on Raft, which is a non-Byzantine uh, algorithm. So it just assumes a crash recovery model, um, and we will leave the uh, Byzantine algorithms out of scope for, for now. So as we said, the key thing that we need of consensus is to elect a leader. And then once we've got a leader, that leader can decide on the order in which the messages should be delivered. And all of the consensus algorithms I've just mentioned do actually use a leader in order to sequence the messages. The details of how exactly they use the leader and how they elect a leader, they differ from algorithm to algorithm. So I'll be focusing on what Raft does in particular. And um, so what we have is we use a timeout, uh, we use local clocks in order to suspect whether a leader has failed or not. So if you remember, the failure detectors that we can have in a partially synchronous system are not always accurate. So it could be that we did we think that a leader has crashed when in fact the leader is working just fine, but there's just a network problem uh, which is stopping us from communicating with the leader. So that's why I say we can only have a suspected leader crash. We can't can never be actually certain if the timeout happened that it was in fact a leader failure. And what we want is that the the consensus algorithm should prevent having two leaders at the same time. Because if we have two leaders, they might make contradictory decisions and then all of our algorithms guarantees are off. And this situation where you have two different leaders, they, they both believe that they're the leader, this is called split brain. And if this happens in a distributed system, it's usually really bad news because it's probably going to mean that some data is going to get corrupted or you're going to lose some data. And so we want to avoid split brain and the consensus algorithm has to be designed in a very careful way so that it doesn't suffer from split brain. And the way this works in Raft is that we have a concept of a term. So a term is just an integer variable. And every time that there's a leader election, that leader election takes place in a certain term. And every time we start a new leader election, we just increment the term. And the guarantee that the leader election provides uh, in Raft is that there will be at most one leader elected in a given term. It could be that the leader election fails and that no leader is elected in a, in a term, but there will never be more than one leader in a given term. And the way this is ensured in Raft is that we have a rule that in each term, a, a node is only allowed to vote once. So just like in a parliamentary election, you're only allowed to cast one vote, very similar here, um, say if we have five, a system of five nodes and uh, say three out of the five elect a new leader, A, B, C have voted in favor of the new leader. Now, later, if C, D and E try to elect a different leader in the same term, they will not be able to because C knows that C has already voted once for this in this particular term and therefore it will not vote again for a different candidate in the same term. In a new term, new start, new leader election. So in that case, uh, every node can vote again. And so what we typically require in a consensus algorithm is that every time we want to elect a leader, we need a quorum of nodes to vote in favor of that leader in that particular term. And so in this case here, if we have uh, three, uh, if we have five nodes, for example, then we could have a majority qu quorum of three out of five. So any three out of five nodes are able to elect a new leader, which means that the system can tolerate two nodes being unavailable and the remaining three nodes out of five can still make progress and still elect a new leader if necessary. So this is what gives us the fault tolerance. And so this approach here of uh, allowing a vote only once per term ensures that within a given term, there is a unique leader. However, this does not actually guarantee that we will not have multiple leaders. Because what could happen is that there are different nodes that are leaders in different terms, and they just don't realize it. So imagine this scenario here. We've got three nodes, one, two, and three, and say that node one was elected to be the leader in term T. But then, a network problem happens and node one is no longer able to communicate with nodes two and three. Node one is still alive. Node one is still a leader, 
but now Node 2 and 3 don't hear anything from their leader anymore. And so at some point, Node 2 and 3 are going to say, well, probably our leader is dead. So we're going to, we're going to elect a new leader in a new term. So call it term T plus 1. Node 2 and 3 are going to elect a new leader among themselves. Maybe Node 2 is going to be the new leader, for example. And now the system has actually got two leaders. It's got node one, which is the leader in term t, and node two, which is the leader in term t plus one. And this, this looks like split brain, doesn't it? So we've got two leaders, this is bad. We want to not be in the situation. But unfortunately, because the network is interrupted, there is no way for node one to know that uh, it, is, it is no longer the leader that has been superseded because the, you know, the communication simply isn't getting through. And so therefore, we need to actually deal with this possibility that there are different leaders existing in the system at the same time in different terms. Uh, and those leaders may for a little while make contradictory decisions. And we have to nevertheless ensure that we have total order broadcast, that we don't violate our properties, um, uh, even though we might have multiple leaders. And the way that consensus algorithms do this is that if a leader wants to decide to deliver a certain message, for example, the leader cannot actually make that decision by itself. But the, delete, but the leader has to again go and ask a quorum of nodes if they are okay to deliver a certain message. And so what the communication flow looks like is something like this now. Say we have leader, uh, leader on the left and two followers. And so first of all, the leader needs to the left node on the left needs to be elected the leader. And so it's going to contact the others, say, are you okay for me to be your new leader? And then the others respond, okay, now it's got a quorum of votes in favor of being a leader. So now the node on the left is the leader after one round of election. Now the, the leader wants to deliver, deliver a message. But as I said, the, the leader cannot just make that decision uh, by itself to simply deliver a message. But instead the leader has to go to the followers again and say, are you okay to deliver message M in term T as the next message? And only if a quorum of followers again respond here and say, okay, yes, we're okay with this message M in term T. And the, the followers will only respond positively if they haven't heard of any other leader in term T plus one. So now if, if uh, the leader again gets this quorum of positive responses, now the leader can safely make the decision to deliver M and it can tell the others, the other nodes that, okay, M is now the next message to be delivered in our total order broadcast. So this is the principle that we have effectively two phases of voting. First of all, uh, a node needs to get elected leader by a quorum of nodes. And then a second round happens in which the, no, the leader checks if it's okay to decide on a certain message next. And this is actually the underlying principle of all of the consensus algorithms that we've seen. And in the next section, we will look in detail at how Raft implements this particular system.